Welcome to Idaho. Greetings from Loman, Idaho. Today we're going on a short hike on a trail called Stargazer Trail. It's a beautiful moderate hike, about three miles in and out. Elevation gain, 600-ish feet. It's supposed to be moderate, but with the snow, it's a bit of an effort just to make your way on the trail. So when we got here this morning, the plan was to rent snowshoes, but we learned that they don't rent snowshoes here in Loman. And so we decided, you know what? We'll get to the trail, assess the situation. If we can make it without snowshoes, we'll do it. If not, we'll go back. Luckily, we met uh, a couple. Um, they were here uh, cross-country skiing. Uh, but I think they turned back or they probably skied down earlier. So it seemed like they were familiar with the area and they told us that we should be fine. Uh, snow is not knee deep, so we can make it. And so far, so good. I mean, it's really pretty out here. All of the trees covered in snow and the trail is pretty well marked. They have blue signs and poles all the way. And I think right now, as I'm speaking, we're probably halfway to the top. So very excited to take you with us. And I apologize, I'm not able to open my eyes and look at the camera, because there's a lot of snow. But looking forward to, to show you the view from the top and maybe show you around the yurt. My calves are definitely doing some work here. I'd say it's important to make sure that you don't over overdress sometimes, so you don't want to be sweating too much when you're hiking. So I popped open my jacket and then making sure that I'm nice and comfy. But a little bit of post hauling, we're, we're having a good walk. We can see the yurt from uh, up here. We just have a bit of climbing to do to get there. And so if there's no one there, we'll give you a tour of the yurt. If not, we'll just show you from outside. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how to make a reservation if you are interested. This is a backcountry yurt and it's named Stargaze. It's managed by the Department of Parks and Recreation. And that's where you can make a reservation if you want to make a reservation online. They also have a phone number and they have an email if you want to reach out for some more information. Now for the reservation online, we're going to go right here. And that's going to take us to a list of regions in Idaho that you can reserve campsites for. So we want to look for Idaho City Yurts and then you can click check availability. So there is a map right here that is super helpful. It's going to show you all of the yurts that are in this area. It's an interactive map and you can even see a list down here. So we are interested in Stargaze Yurts. So you go to that and then you click enter dates and that is going to give you an option to specify your arrival date. So let's pick something for February. And let's say we are staying for one night, you can check availability. So there isn't really any spot available for these dates because they book very quickly. So you have to make your reservation months ahead of time. So even if we go next two weeks, March, April, like the next availability is up until April. So if it's a place that you want to go to, you want to make sure that you are reserving as soon as you can. And then you can specify how long you want to stay there for your arrival date and all of the details. It looks like the price rate right here is $115 per night. And you can do some more reading to find out some more details about the site and the things that you should keep in mind before getting there. And that's pretty much it. It's a very easy process to make a reservation online. Do you see the the gate over there, like that's a gate. It's all buried under snow. Holy buckets. We're getting to knee level, knee deep. How does it feel? I don't know, we're just... We're just debating whether it's worth it to get up to the earth. It's just a couple of feet up, it's getting really deep. Ah. 
can't believe that the whole gate. Oh my God, Alex! Me <laughs> down, coach. Me down. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so we're not going up to the yurt. I don't want to wade through the snow. Definitely snowshoes if you want to do this. It's just safer and better and easier, whatever. Everybody's camped down the trail, but... Not going up to the yurt. Also, it's even a question of privacy. You know, if there are people there, we may not be able to see the yurt from the inside. And so we're gonna get to, to the end of the trail here and then head back. But this is, this is fun. So for this uh, particular trip, we did not bring our hiking uh, bags, just because the plan was not to really hike. But we brought our new Sea to Summit bags, the foldable compact bags, and they are doing such a great job. Alex is wearing his blue one and I have got my orange bag. I'm using it to carry some water, I've got uh, an emergency kit. I've got some camera gear. It's doing a pretty good job. It's not supposed to be super waterproof, but it's holding strong. What do you think of your bag? They're fine for what they are. They're certainly not like a 20 liter day pack or anything, but for the sake of just lightweight travel bag. Fantastic. They're not bad. Wow, look at this tree. There is a trail mark where motorized vehicles are not allowed and for some reason just when we got past that point it feels raw it feels like no one came here before and it's so pretty all of the trees are covered in snow it looks surreal to say the least it's uh, getting a little bit too deep for my liking but i see the end of the trail <sighs> Woohoo! Stargaze Point. What a beautiful day, what a beautiful hike, what a beautiful state to be in. It was a little bit intimidating without snowshoes and without cross-country skis, but we're here, we're happy, we're pleased, and this snow uh, feels like heaven. I'm not sure if you guys can see the years, but it's all the way up there. That's the route that we couldn't take up or that we didn't want to take up. So, and we actually spot two people over there, skiers probably. It's been uh, just the two of us for the most part, but we're always happy to see people. We're making our way down and uh, it's not bad. I think uh, we covered halfway down. Um, it's really pretty. And the good thing is they do have blue signs everywhere. So even if the snow is deep, you can still spot the blue signs and that kind of helped. The other thing that helped is the couple that was behind us, they skied up the mountain. And so it just helps us, you know, to not have to wade in the snow. Going the same way we, we came up and um, we do have a reservation at the lodge. The package that we got includes the sleigh ride, pretty exciting, and the dinner. So um, we wanted to hit the hot springs, but I don't think we will have enough time to do that, uh, even though I was very much looking forward to it, but we can do it tomorrow. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we met back again with the, the couple that we talked to at the trailhead and you know, we had a nice conversation and they're a bit older. And to me, 
I don't know a lot of people in my environment who are of old age, but they are still rocking it in the outdoors and hiking and skiing, cross country skiing and doing all the cool stuff. So it was really nice to, to talk to them. They were 73 and 66, I think. And uh, it's very inspiring when you see uh, people like that. So it was a happy moment for me today. Mr. Photographer, videographer, best boy. Sure. My That's shoelaces good. have picked up so much snow. <laughs> you want me to get it? Sure. Oh my Don't god. Don't pull my laces off, just crush the snow. <laughs> I was like, well, he just hit me in the leg. I was like, maybe my boots just like. We made it out. Our elevation right here, 6,064 feet. What a hike. Loved it, loved it, loved it.